I get asked a lot how we came about the name Chocolate Fish and, and coming from New Zealand we wanted a name that was reflective of where we were from. So in New Zealand a chocolate fish is actually an iconic candy that we give as a thank you. So if someone did you a favour you would thank them by giving them a chocolate fish. So Andy and I were living in New Zealand and the coffee culture there was simply amazing. You would meet friends multiple times a day and have an espresso drink and a great conversation. And we loved it and we wanted to do our own business so why not do something you love? And so we started doing a lot of research and had some favorite coffee houses we went to, took classes, got involved in their um, barista competitions and said, yep, this is what we want to do. And we opened our first shop in 2008 in downtown Sacramento. Before we opened, we wanted to serve the highest quality coffee we could. So we did a lot of research on roasters um, that were serving and roasting really good coffee. And we found one and then used his coffee for a couple of years. And then after a couple of years, we decided that we really wanted to take control of our own destiny and our own product and, and have control right through the process from sourcing green beans to roasting it to serving it. Um, and then in 2010, we went on a trip to Guatemala. Yep. Um, we spent 12 days with, I think, 27 different roasters from around the world. We learned all about the coffee processing. And then by the end of the trip, what we found is that these roasters would come back to us and say, we've decided we've got a plan for you. We want you to buy a smaller roaster, stick it in your garage, get the quality where you think it should be, and then bring it into the shop. And that's exactly what we did. We got a roaster, our neighbors loved us. We gave them free coffee for about six months until we, we got to a quality we thought was good. Slowly, we moved the roastery into a commercial space. And at the end of 2010, we started introducing our own coffee into the cafes. Along with being accessible, which is really, really important, we don't want to alienate our customers. We want them to come in and learn. So training, it's huge. It's huge to make sure our baristas are very well trained. We have a lab here, and they all go through um, first coffee training, learning their palate, learning how to taste, and how to help the customer find their favorite coffee. And our baristas have been so good, we've competed at national levels with barista competitions and done really well. But all of it goes back to that quality coffee, getting it from the producer and then it goes to Andy and Andy decides how to roast it. We cup it and we all decide together like, oh, should you make this change or that change? And then um, in the end, we get this great flavor profile that we can repeat each time. After hearing about what we do and where we came from and, and the commitment and passion we have for our product, we hope that you can take that same passion and pass it on to your customers and so you'll be successful, they'll get a great product and it's a win-win for everyone. And especially coffee is only going to survive if people become more educated and they understand why there's all these complex flavors in the coffee. And it's up to us to be the educators and pass that on. You know, we're helping more than just our community here. We're helping the communities we purchase coffee from. So one cup of coffee here goes a long way across the world. And I know it sounds silly, but if you had been to a coffee farm and seen the community, you know, you come back feeling so responsible to help them stay sustainable. So go, go make good coffee and spread the word.